everyone, George here, and I'm at Tropica Aquarium Plants here in Denmark. I've uh, been here for a few days, uh, been working on their website, creating videos for these guys. Always a privilege to be here. Love Denmark. And today I wanted to show you around. I wanted to show you my one of my favourite places in the greenhouse. It's where they uh, grow the mosses and some epiphyte plants in a special kind of high humidity tent. So I'll show you around there. We can take some close-ups of some of the plants and, and talk about them in a bit more detail. So I really hope you enjoy it, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you do and subscribe if you haven't already. So let's go and take a look. In the moss tent, we call this. So this is where Tropica grow all their mosses and then they're prepared for the customers and I'm not sure what species is which I can make some guesses but I don't want to get it wrong for you guys so we'll just say that they're all beautiful mosses and you can just see how green and lush they are I'm not color correcting this video it's straight from the camera and it's just a beautiful place to be it's really humid obviously uh, the moss has to be uh, prevented from drying out so we do have a very humid atmosphere we do have these um, sprayers here that come on intermittently to maintain a certain level of humidity and i have to say these are probably my favorite product one of my favorite products that tropica do so we've got obviously the bogwood there malaysian driftwood with some it looks like taxophyllum spiky and then we've got the beautiful hygrophila pinnatifida which is that serrated leaf plant and this is a it, this is great this hygrophila pinnatifida because it's been, it can be grown as a regular stem plant or it can be grown like it is right now as an epiphyte plant and the great thing about these these are like the aqua decor products that tropica do these are perfect you know you can put this in a nano tank and you've got instant focal point you know you've got instant impact instant sort of sense of maturity with the mosses so i really really love these products and if you're a beginner aquascaper in particular it's a really really great way to get started so more moss i think we've got weeping moss spiky moss uh, they also keep the bulbs in here, so these are Aponogeton bulbs. You just see here, this is a Aponogeton bolivianus, I think. And then we've got some lava stones here with some moss attached. This looks like regular Java moss. Uh, but like I said, I'm not 100% certain. If you're a moss expert, then let me know if you know what this moss is. Uh, but again, perfect for aquascaping. You know, if you want to create this ancient kind of feel, mosses are perfect for aquascaping. And if you want to create a particularly kind of mature look, just really help to dress the decor, the hardscape, help create this kind of mature feel, which is, you know, when you're aquascaping nature aquariums, this is the kind of look we're looking for we want to be kind of transferring this essence of nature from outside into the aquarium look at this this is beautiful isn't it just ready grown on there nice and mature pop that in your scape and away you go perfect you could just create an aquascape entirely out of these products these are, look at these these are beautiful this is amazing this piece here Stunning. Look at that. Just imagine that in an aquarium. In an aquarium, just a couple of pieces of these, and that, you're pretty much good to go. So, more mosses, more mosses, uh, more aqua decor with the lava rock and the and the bogwood. Uh, we've also got some looks like Anubius spartari. The uh, the original version, the big leaf version, and this is uh, attached to coconut. So it's attached at the moment with an elastic band, and then once those roots, which have started to do creep over that coconut, they'll self-attach, and then the, that elastic band can re be removed because we don't want to see these kind of artificial-looking products in the aquascape necessarily. And just more of the same, really, more beautiful aqua decor products, 
more mosses. Uh, it's just a really great place to be. So what are your thoughts guys? What's your favourite bit of decor? Is it the aqua decor with the Hygropola pinnata feeder? Or is it the just the wood with the moss attached to it? Or is it the lava stone with the moss? You can, I can imagine actually stacking all these up, maybe as an irigumi, a moss only irigumi. I think the, the potential danger with a moss only irigumi is the lack of plant biomass. So because the plants, the moss is slow growing, so it doesn't really have that ability to fight off algae. If you didn't already know, then you know, algae and plants are kind of always in battle with each other. And the more, the more fast plant growth we have, the less kind of algae we have. So if you have really slow growing plants, then algae can get the upper hand. So this is why I always recommend to plant heavily with fast growing stems in particular, or even floating plants, especially in the beginning of an aquascape's life. Oh, sorry about that noise. They start production on the uh, on the blister packs. So let's just take another look at the greenhouse, shall we? So here we've got the submerged section of the greenhouse. There's lots and lots of vats here, and this is where the plants are produced actually underwater. The vast majority of plants are produced out of water, which makes them more robust, more adaptable, um, better for transportation. Uh, they have a larger nutrient store but some species are grown underwater this is cryptocoryne balansi i believe uh, there's also lilies uh, let's have a look over here what we've we got here oh very nice got some lilies nymphia lotus beautiful lilies here let's have a look take a close look so these are all pl these are plants that actually obviously need to grow underwater and these won't grow out of water so beautiful and you can get an idea of the size of the submerged section but i don't know if you the tents go back i don't know about three four hundred feet uh, 100 meters or so probably more and this is where all the plants are growing out of water so let's just take a look at a random excuse the flicker in let's take a look at a random tent just lift this up see what's in here there we go, look at that, beautiful. Oh. So here we've got my favorite, one of my favorite plants. This looks like uh, Microsorum narrow. Uh, this is attached to wood as well. So this is the Aqua Decor product. And again, this is uh, perfect for you know, instant, instant impact in your aquascape, look at that. One tip, one thing I like to do is actually create the hardscape first, like your wood and rocks. And then you can actually wedge this in Amongst, you, amongst the wood that you've just set up, potentially hide this bit of wood here, but you've got this effect of the, the plant growing out of the wood. So you, you can even peel this off if you wanted to and reattach it to your current your, your wood that you've just used. So lots of options. You don't necessarily have to use the wood that it's grown on, but I prefer to use this product rather than the potted versions because the way it's been grown on the wood just lends itself to look more natural. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So this is just one of probably a thousand or so tents. You can get an idea of how, you know, what sort of scale the production is here. Let's go and take a look somewhere else. Okay, here we have a typical kind of scene from the greenhouse. Beautiful plants. All grown out of water, as you can see. Just look at this, Ludwigia. It might be glandiosa. Beautiful. So healthy. And you can actually, you feel better when you're in here. You know, the, the, you can actually kind of feel the oxygen, the extra oxygen levels because of the, obviously the photosynthesis of the plants here, producing oxygen. Look at this. This is a Pogostum and erectus. One of my favorite stem plants. Absolutely beautiful. And then it looks like a hygrophila behind that. And then we've got some limnophila sessiflora here. Looks like a little forest, doesn't it? Amazing. Uh, let's just switch it over here. We've got some Altananthera. Some more Ludwigia. And check this Altananthera. I think this is the ver this is like the rosafolia, I think, the variegated version. Check out these leaves. Absolutely stunning. So all these are grown hydroponically, which means the roots are actually 
uh, fed nutrients through like a nutrient rich uh, water, special like a, obviously a special recipe to get the best growth. Um, and the, the plants have unlimited access to CO2 in the air. The greenhouse itself is actually, uh, the atmosphere is actually CO2 rich as well. They have a huge CO2 cylinder uh, outside, which is actually liquid CO2. I'll show you that, uh, an image of that in a minute. I've actually put that on my on one of my Instagram stories. Uh, this is Ludwigia palustris. This is one of the few kind of plants that will do really well, red plants that will do well in, in low lighting. I really like this plant. Don't, I haven't used this enough, really. This is a uh, Mundania. Uh, I forget the full name. I'll, I'll put a little label at the bottom of the screen right now for you. But I like this. This looks like, uh, gives us like a bamboo effect. Really like naturalistic. It reminds me of like a rice paddy. Some more forests <laughs> of Limnophila sessiflora. Uh, this is actually one of the best plants for beginners and for new setups. Uh, it grows really, really fast. It, it's, um, it's super easy, it doesn't need CO2 injection. And because it's such a fast grower, it's really ideal for a new setup where algae is really risky. And like I said earlier, the, more, the faster the plant growth we have, the less algae we get. This is uh, the Hygrophila polysperma, the Rosenavig, the pink variety. So you can actually see it's just those leaves. You can see like variegated pink on there, which looks great. Here we've got some Lindernia. Again, this is like a variegated leaf. It's beautiful. Uh, and this looks like, it actually looks like Monte Carlo, but the leaf shapes are too big. It must be, uh, maybe it's Micranthemum ambrosum. Let me know what you think. Some Bacopa Compact, these aren't actually grown in yet. This is, these are at the sort of early stages of growth. And then we've got some Orantinanthra, and then we've got loads of tents there. So these tents are there to kind of control the humidity. These are species that need a high humidity setting. And then the ones that need less humidity are exposed to the air. So you can just get a kind of sense of scale, how big this place is. You know, I spend, I spend around a week uh, every month here now um, helping Tropica out with their website and some video content creation. Uh, it's a really great place to be. Uh, the local city uh, is Aarhus, uh, which is a beautiful city. It's really uh, got beautiful architecture. You've got the water, you've got the coastline, you've got some forests. Um, so I, I really love coming over here. Obviously miss being at home, miss my family. Um, but with modern technology now and FaceTime, etc., you know, you can stay in touch really easily. So I just really look forward to coming over here, feeling part of a team. Exciting, we've coming up to our 50th anniversary soon. So we're developing a new kind of Tropica book, which will be released at Interzoo 2020, which is May next year. Uh, maybe I'll see some of you there. It is trade only, but if you're a, if you're a blogger or a, or a creator, I think you can. Well, I got a press pass last year. So I was there under my own kind of brand as a blogger. So if you are, you know, someone that uh, is a blogger or a creator of some description or some sort of press, then you can potentially get a pass to go to Interzoo. So that's something I would definitely recommend. So here we have a tent here, and then you can see. These are kind of plants that are just at the beginning of their process. Okay guys, there you go. A brief insight into the moss tent here at Tropica Aquarium Plants and also just a little look around the greenhouse. Really hope you enjoyed this little tour. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. And drop me a comment below. Uh, what's your favorite part of the greenhouse? And also uh, let me know if there's any particular area of Tropica that you want me to look at in more detail. Um, I know a lot of people are interested in the laboratory uh, for the one two grow pots. This is a little bit of a secret area, but maybe I can see what I can do on the next vlog. So really hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. You take care. Keep on scaping. Cheerio.